and unpin that so that we can see the report or not. And this is also a one-way upgrade, what you're doing here for this individual report. Yeah, it's always an upgrade. It's always a one-way upgrade. Right. Always a one-way upgrade. So there we see the report actual running. And then if we go look at the schema again, you'll see that it was upgraded to the 2008 schema. And what the designer does is it only upgrades the report as far as it needs to based on the features in that report. So if I had added some more features, let's say I had added uh, a spark line or I'd added KPI indicators, we would see that this would be upgraded to a newer schema than 2008 oh, in this case. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I think that concludes uh, my demonstration. So let me jump back to my slide. So there's a quick walkthrough of the upgrade process. And of course, uh, what we want to see when we get to that is a whole bunch of green check marks at the end of the upgrade, just to indicate that everyone, everything went uh, as it should have. So um, all project upgrades are one way, as we just talked about. The RD, RDL files are only upgraded to the new XML schema when necessary, as we just discussed. And each report RDL will be upgraded as it's edited, in mm -hmm. summary. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so there's a quick uh, quick walkthrough of, of what we just did um, with uh, the summary report that shows us where we've been. My experience generally with reporting services upgrades ha has been very smooth. And, and that's not to say that things can't go wrong. But generally speaking, if you've backed up your configuration files and your database, um, and then you do an in-place upgrade, my, my experience has generally been that that's, that's very successful and it goes very smoothly. <clears throat> Paul, any complications if you had a uh, SSRS web server farm? So you have uh, maybe a load balancer that's directing to multiple SSRS in, uh, instances. Any uh, complications with uh, that type well, of upgrade? Well, of course. So the, the, more, the more components that we add to a solution, the more opportunity for failure. Okay. And so we, you know, there's some added layers in that, in that example that yeah. you just gave. And, and yes, of course. And I think that what would, what would come into play there is that we're depending on uh, IIS and the load balancing and the farm configuration and then moving that to new reporting services, um, there would be some reconfiguration necessary. Okay. We okay. definitely need to back up the bus a bit and, okay. and, uh, and, and rebuild that, that farm and the load balancing. Okay. Um, which brings us to the topic of, of backup and a rollback plan. So it's always important to have a plan B. And it's something that, that we've learned time and again in projects. Uh, we normally don't get called in to do the easy stuff. Um, and uh, so it, this is a short list of the configuration files that, that I had backed up earlier. Um, so all of the reporting services server configuration files are in the report server folder. Um, the, the, um, under the old regimen of IIS, you also have the, the web.config and the application.config file that may have some reporting services specific settings. So you may want to back up those files as well. And then there are some designer specific files. And that's not something I would I normally worry about because um, you, we don't need to typically roll back to an old designer environment. But it's, uh, it's always mm -hmm. good to be on the safe side and back up anything. that uh, These are very small files anyway. Machine.config file is what I meant to say there. And uh, so preparing to upgrade. Um, so determine and evaluate the potential upgrade issues. Uh, things like uh, a scaled out environment could, could certainly be um, a factor. Any custom components, um, those are going to be tripping points that can certainly complicate things. Um, and uh, if you have developed custom components, let's say that you have a, a custom .NET component that's, um, that's referenced in your report. So we may have uh, the, the version of the .NET framework to contend with there mm -hmm. and, and things like uh, whether or not that's registered in the global assembly cache on your server. And so you'll need to work with the system administrator to make sure that all of those things are pla in place on the new instance. Um, and then run the SQL Server Upgrade Advisor, uh, which will do a good job of looking at your server and, and, and looking for um, compatibility issues or, or any other dependencies that, uh, that may, you may have. 
So for an in-place upgrade, again, generally, um, this is a fairly straightforward process. You select the target instance, um, and then you upgrade, and you're going to end up with a, with a, a new instance of SQL Server 2012 or 2014 with that instance name. And uh, earlier in, in my demo, my instance name was SQL 2005. I'm going to end up with an instance of SQL Server 2014 called SQL 2005. So that can be a little confusing. Um, the, the catalog database for reporting services must be in at least uh, SQL Server 2008 R2. So you can move that all the way up to 2014 if you want, but, but as long as it's in 2008 R2, uh, or after it, it will work with 2012 or 2014. And then review the summary actions and click the upgrade button and commit. In a side-by-side -side upgrade, which essentially means that we're going to leave the original instance and report server in place, um, it always gives us this fail-safe plan to go back and just use that original instance if things didn't go as planned. And you know, never hurts to do this. Always a good idea, especially if you have a very complex report environment. And by complex, that might, might mean that you have hundreds of reports out there that have been uh, designed and evolved over many years. And so who knows what different developers and report designers have done as they've developed those reports, what dependencies might be in place, or what creative design techniques they've used. So that, that might be a, a, a good indication that a side-by-side uh, upgrade would, would at least be a good first step to see how things go. Paul, I, I talk to a lot of people who use uh, SSRS to export to Excel. Yeah. And are there any caveats uh, to be aware of in an upgrade scenario where people are not just running the RDL, but then also exporting it into Excel? So two things. Um, one is that the Excel renderer has been incrementally improved over the last couple of versions of SQL Server. So uh, generally, export to Excel is, is a better experience than it's been in the past. Now, that's, you know, that, that's, that's one of those things that, as I go out and do consulting and talk to clients, and, and they say, hey, you know, we, we develop these, these nice visual reports with charts and, and spark lines and, and, and scorecards and things, and then they export them to Excel and they're not happy with the results. Well, you know, if Excel was the ultimate target, why aren't we using Excel? Um, but if, if, we, if there is justification for using reporting services to schedule subscriptions and to render to other formats and to have interactive drill down and drill through reports that we also need to export to Excel, generally that's better than it's been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second thing to note there is that uh, the default Excel renderer is the Excel 2007 and beyond format, the XLSX format mm -hmm. rather than the old X. SL format. Did I get that right? Yeah. Um, it was 2003, if I recall. Right, yeah, yeah. right. Now, um, uh, and, and I'm not quite sure if this is on the deprecation or non supported list or not, but that uh, rendering extension is actually still shipped with the product. It's just remarked out in the configuration file. So uh, if you do need uh, old Excel format support, you can actually <laughs> enable that. I did this for a client not long ago, so I know okay. it works. Um, but that, w that would be an exception and not something okay. I would recommend to a client. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good questions. All right. So, uh, troubleshooting and uh, failed upgrade. So, I incidentally, this is a picture that I took in, in Hyderabad, India. <laughs> um, so, things can go wrong. You know, there, I, I think the, the more components that you have in the equation, the, the more opportunity there is for things to go wrong. And um, Reporting Services does a good job of logging errors, and it keeps its own trace log files. And in, in the, um, the report server configuration file, I, 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 I'm not sure if that's the exact name of the file, but the main configuration file used with Reporting Services, you can actually change the, um, the uh, logging level. And so if you do an upgrade and you go run reports in your server and it fails, you can go escalate that logging level for the trace logs, and then you'll get more verbose information. And it may give you a better indication of what's going wrong. And, and nine times out of 10, or maybe 99 times out of 100, that's going to be a mismatched component. So it's going to be the wrong version of a DLL file somewhere, some dependent component, 
or it's going to be a security and authentication issue, which is really kind of our go-to. When, when there's a problem, when components aren't talking to each other and services aren't working, it, it's often authentication. And mm -hmm. so, um, again, you, you'll find evidence of that in these trace files. A couple of key phrases to search for. These files can get pretty big, and there's just a lot in there to, to read through. So search for Watson Bucket. That'll give you uh, information about memory dumps. And then search for error, colon, exception, has been, and then there can be all kinds of things at the end of that. So just good things to